Hi, today we'll take a look at MIDI functionality of plugins. As multi-parameters and modulators, MIDI notes and controllers can also be used to control a plugin. It's especially useful at a live performance when you want to employ an external hardware MIDI controller. To open MIDI settings window, click on the MIDI button located in the right hand bottom corner of the plugins interface. On the top, we see three options, controllers, notes, and preset switch. The first one is where we set MIDI controllers. Click on the enable button. On the left side, we find a list of plugins parameters that can be controlled by a single MIDI controller. Unlike the parameters panel, here we can't add or delete parameters. Their number, 32, is fixed. Nevertheless, we don't have to use all of them at once. All what we need to do is, we tick as many parameters as we need. Untouched ones won't be used. From the start, all 32 controllers are set to some default parameter. Here, it's the dry wet. To replace it, open the select parameter window by clicking on the parameter button or double clicking on the item itself. Next, find the parameter you need and click on OK. Don't forget to tick the parameter. You can disengage any parameter by taking off a tick anytime. To appoint a MIDI controller, I must find a way to send MIDI data into a plugin first. Here in Cubase, it's made through a MIDI track whose output is sent to the plugin's MIDI input, like this. Activate the Learn function. Now, if I touch anything on my MIDI keyboard, any controller or key, this data will be sent to the plugin M Auto Dynamic EQ, in my case, and MIDI controller will be set. If you wish, you can always change the MIDI channel or select another controller later on. Next panel down is the values. Here we appoint the range of each parameter in which it will operate. The range mode defines the way a MIDI controller controls parameters. In the up and down mode, the value knob sets an initial parameters value. The depth determines the parameters change depth. It can't be higher than the value set by the value knob. In the full range mode, the range is always equal to the value set by the depth knob. However, unlike the previous mode, the value set by the value knob can be off a range's center. Hence, the depth parameter overwrites limitations set by the value knob. The up only and down only modes are self-explanatory. Here, the value knob sets the initial parameter value and the depth knob defines the depth of the change, up or down correspondingly. The interval mode sets the range in which the change will happen. It's controlled by two knobs, the value and maximal value. If the value is higher than the maximal value, then the modulation's direction will get reversed. You can also invert the modulation in any mode by selecting the invert option. The interpolated option serves for smoothing out abrupt changes that can possibly be present in MIDI messages. After all, there are only 128 values a MIDI controller can adhibit. However, sometimes a sharp change is exactly what we need. So use your own discretion. All what we've learned so far can be saved as a part of a preset. That gives us huge possibilities in configuring MIDI settings for each preset. You can literally use the same MIDI controller for changing completely different parameters in different presets. But frequently, we are happy to set MIDI controllers that would stay the same for all presets. If that's what you want, then turn on the Do Not Load from Presets option. From now on, a plugin will use the MIDI controllers for all presets the way you just set them. The next tab is called Notes. As you have already guessed, notes played on a MIDI keyboard can be employed as MIDI controller too. I'm going to omit the parameters we've already learnt and I'll concentrate on new stuff. Mode in the Values panel defines the way MIDI notes control parameters. Min and max values set a parameter's extreme values. The linear and logarithmic modes distribute all parameter values over MIDI keys. 
Let's take the low pass filter frequency as an example. I want it to vary within 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz range. To achieve that, I must set the min value to 20 hertz and the max value to 20 kilohertz. I select the logarithmic mode as it suits better when working with frequency, pitch and decibels as units. Now, if I play some keys on a MIDI keyboard, the low pass filter will follow my performance. On off mode works as a button switching between the min and max values. First, I must determine a MIDI key I'd like to use as a button. I select D2. Now, if I press it, the filter will jump to 5 kHz. And when I release the key, the filter will go back to 500 Hz. On off all octaves allows you to employ the D note of every octave. That is, I can press the D1, D2, D3, etc., and the filter will react equally to each of them. Switch and switch all octaves are similar to the above mentioned modes. The only difference is you don't have to hold a key to keep a parameter in its max value. Here, each keystroke sequentially switch a parameter between the min and max values. For instance, when I press a key for the first time, the filter will take its max value. If I press the key again, the filter will move to its min value. And if I press the key a third time, the filter will again jump up to its max value, and so on. Preset Switch tab gives you an ability to set up a MIDI controller for switching presets. The result is the same as if you would click on an arrow button located beside the presets menu. As with two previous tabs, to make this system work, you must first set a MIDI channel and learn a MIDI controller. As you remember, the MIDI controller's range is 0 to 127. Now, imagine we're changing the controller from 127 to 0. When the controller is passing by 42, it's considered as if we clicked on the left arrow. As a result, the plugin loads the previous preset. And vice versa. Let's start changing the controller from 0 to 127. Now, when it's passing through 85, it's counted as if we've clicked on the right arrow. As a result, the plugin loads a following preset. OK, it's all good. But what if I want to jump over a preset straight away without going through other presets first? For that, I must enable the Program Change in Presets panel. Next, I must type the name of a subfolder with my presets. And now, if I send a program change MIDI message, it'll select the preset immediately. Happy MIDI controlling.